Good morning, good morning, and welcome to People Talk Now. I'm your host, Vanessa Herrera, and this is the show where you ask about it and I talk about it. And let's not forget, guys, we're changing the pace on what people call better days. And today's topic of discussion, I wanted to bring up um, on ways we can help our communities. And the reason I feel so strongly about this is because a lot of the times, or most times, when I'm out with my family and um, we've gone out to maybe like the theaters or just anywhere, really, it kind of doesn't really matter where you go nowadays. Well, it does in a sense, but then it doesn't. But especially if you live in the LA area. But this is like open to a more broad general topic. Um, I tend to see a lot of littering and just garbage out and about on the ground. And I don't know why, but it just tends to bother me because I think to myself, like, this is our world and... We live in it, but we treat it like it's a trash can. And it's just bad, man, because a lot of things are, um, a lot of things are not being said. And that's kind of what I want to make this podcast about is like bringing up things that make people feel uncomfortable or that make you think. And really, that's essentially what I want to do. And if after you, Stop listening to this podcast, and if you really think about what I've said, then that's essentially all I really want to do. But before I get all deep into this convo and stuff, I really wanted to bring up the fact that today is Wednesday, and you are halfway through the week. Yeah. So, on that note, give yourself a round of applause. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, um, yeah. So, let's get back into it. Again, I feel really strongly about it because when I was younger, my dad really emphasized on, like, me and my brother and my sister. I'm the oldest of three siblings, and he always emphasized a lot about us not throwing garbage outside. One of the things he would always say that stuck to me, he said, this is your world, like, you live in it. Take care of it. It's nobody's, like, we all have a responsibility to carry. And, um, you know, when you're a kid and you're hearing this, you're kind of, like, in a way, you're like, what the fuck you mean? Like, like you don't understand it, really, but you try your best to understand it. It's not until we get older... And we actually start experiencing life and living it that it starts making a whole lot of sense. And so I think one of the reasons that I I just was like, you know what, I'm going to talk about it um, is because of a lot of the things that I've been hearing that's going on around us and like the Amazon race, rainforest fires and um, you know, this, this whole vegan movement and just, um, I don't know if you guys heard, but, um, on what was it? What day was it? I want to say it was on Monday, a young girl, her name is Greta Thunberg. I'm not sure if I said her name right. Um, she went up there and spoke against five countries about the climate crisis. And I don't know, man, like after I heard the speech, I was just so moved because she's right, man. Like, let's be real. Like we have a very intelligent and smart younger generation that is exposed to things that we weren't exposed when some of us were younger and this is a new age and era in 
kids are evolving so much faster than when I was a kid. And things are just changing rapidly. And on that note, um, you know, the reason why I brought her up is because she's so young and she's so passionate and she has this will and this fearless mentality where she's just like, hey, man, like, shit needs to change and it needs to change now because we are not running on this unlimited uh, lifespan like the way is being portrayed here as far as like um, as um, as it's being portrayed basically so I, I got to thinking you know like when I'm out and about with my family and my kids and I see thing like just a bunch of garbage and stuff thrown on the floor. I just think like fuck, like where do like where where do we go wrong? Like what's going on? Like how have we evolved into people that don't communicate and more than anything, like think that it's okay. Like and I'm not saying this is everybody. This is not this is not like target it at one specific person but I do feel like we uh, as people need to take responsibility um like we're nothing's going to change if for example somebody maybe leaves something behind and we see something and we complain about it and we say like well shit like why the fuck would this person throw this for an example like this cup here and we complain about it and we've become this sort of nation of complainers and we'll say like like why did they do this and why did they do this and we have plenty of things to say about it but we don't offer the solution and so you know one of the things that we could do as a community is to kind of volunteer, like start volunteering. Um, I remember recently, a couple of weeks ago, I was out with my husband and my kids and we were just hanging out, having some yogurt in front of the theaters. And, you know, there was a bunch of cups and trash left out. And, you know, me and my husband started talking about it. And, you know, my son, he's very smart. He, um, he kind of made like a statement on it too. He's just like, oh my God, why are people so dirty? And, you know, why, why are they just leaving their garbage here? And I said, you know what? Like, you're right. I said, but what, like, what are we going to do about it? Like, they're already gone. And, you know, we have to make the change that we want to see in this world. And yeah, we've heard people say it, but let's be real. There really is not a vast majority of people that will actually do something about it. So I was just like, you know what? I said, I have to set the example right now. I have to be the person to show them that you need to do something about it. You need to take action when something bothers you, especially when it's like towards the world that we live in. And I came up with this quote. <laughs> it actually came to me today and I'm very proud of it. And I will, I will tell you guys shortly, but, First, before I kind of share my new uh, quote with you guys, um, I just wanted to say, like, that day, um, a couple weeks ago, I, I, I ended up just, like, started gathering these cups and spoons and napkins, all these things that I found, and, like, my kids saw me, and they started picking up stuff, too, and it just made me really happy because sometimes it's not, like, it's the initial action of you doing it, like you taking on, like you acknowledging it and saying like, wow, this is here, you know? Like instead of bitching and complaining and saying like, this is here, saying like, okay, it's here. Well, all right, cool. These people are gone already. Like what good will it do to the environment of you bitching and complaining? No good. It just You just don't like a negative ass person 
And sure, it's it's okay to be bothered. Acknowledge the fact that you're bothered by it, but do something about it. And especially if you're with cousins, nieces, and nephews, you know, maybe you're not a parent, but you have nieces and nephews and you're out and about and you see garbage. <laughs> Yo, show them the way. Pave the way. This is the new and upcoming generation. Like, we got to show them. And they're watching. Like, you know, a lot of people think that, that they're not watching but they are, they really are. And, uh, you know, one of the things I thought about today, my quote that I'm going to share with you guys is this, this is what I thought about. I said, you know, when we are born in this world, like all of us, every single, every single one of us, it doesn't matter your status. It doesn't matter. Like we are born And this world belongs to us, like the minute that we were born. But see, somehow along the way, because of like our upbringing and things that we're exposed to, and we just kind of think like, oh, like it's like it's not our problem anymore. And I don't know like when it happens or how for everybody is different, but again, this world is our responsibility and we need to start kind of taking some action. So I kind of said to myself, like, all right, Vanessa, if you're going to have a podcast and talk to people about what are some of the things, like not just what are some of the things, but if to, in order to make a change, you have to have solutions to the problems. And so on that very note, I kind of came up with a topic and the topic is neighborhood enhancement. So in order for us to begin to basically help our community, we got to start finding ways to help it. And so I said, all right, what's one way? What, what would be the initial, what would be the first step? And I think the very first step or one of the first things we could do is just start getting involved, like volunteering. You know, people will spend about 20 to 30 minutes in total sum throughout the whole day on their phone of a span of 24 hours and maybe more for some. Um, For some people, their cell phones consume their life, uh, digital devices. And so I say this, get involved as a volunteer because there is so many opportunities out there to volunteer. Like people are always looking for help. There is businesses, there is corporations, there is, um, there is communities other than the one that you live in because it's a big world, online or outside, that are looking for help for people to help them. And But none of us essentially will ever know if we don't actually start going out there and looking for these places. Like there is homeless shelters um, that are always looking for help for people to volunteer and figure out ways to improve, you know, the community and the homeless population is suffering, you know. I won't get too much into detail into that, but I do plan on soon making a podcast about that, about things that I've seen that have bothered me, and I've before I speak on something, I always want to make sure that I've kind of come up with some sort of solution as to what can actually be done to help. And... Yeah, so, again, just volunteer, you know, get involved into something. Like, just, you'll feel so good, and it will benefit your community, especially depending, like, if, like, anything, really, like, on what you volunteer. You can volunteer to clean up your neighborhood. You can volunteer at a local boys and girls club and, like, be a big brother or sister to some kid that doesn't really have that support group at home. And, um, 
it's very important that we also support our local businesses, you know, like smaller uh, stores that, you know, are run by mom and pop shops. Like it's important that we support those kind of businesses because, you know, those businesses started from, you know, the ground up and, you know, they have these, they have, they're just trying to strive and make it and they have families and like, they're literally their business is everything to them. And imagine if that was you, like put yourself in those shoes and you say like, well, how's that my problem? Well, that's just it. <laughs> you know, by supporting all these like big places, you know, um, you know, all these stores that just make everything so accessible and they're just um, contributing to consumerism. Like you could do something about it. Like you do have the power to change that. Another thing we can like help do as far as like improving our communities is like help tidy up your community. Like if you're walking outside through your neighborhood, you know, let's let me paint you a picture here. Let's say it's a fine sunny afternoon. The birds are chirping and you know, life is just beautiful outside. And then I know as you're walking and you see a big plastic bag just Somewhere's maybe where you know it shouldn't be and it just looks off. And you see it and you're walking with someone you love. And you say to yourself inside, you're like, wow, that just doesn't look right there. But you keep walking. You keep walking on with your day. And I think that's where a lot of the issues can be kind of helped is when we start taking responsibility and saying like, no, again, repeat it with me. When we are born, this world belongs to us. So it's, we are responsible. If you are one of, if you are walking and you see something and you don't do anything about it and you just keep living, you leave it there on the ground and it's garbage and it's in your world, this world is yours and you don't pick it up, and you don't go throw it away, or you don't do something about it. It is your problem. You're part of the problem. And you can't even deny it and say, like, no, it's not my responsibility. No, it is your responsibility. It is. It's every single one of our responsibilities. But see, if you happen to be the person that's walking by one of the problems, whether you did it or not, and you notice it, you don't do anything about it. It is it becomes your problem. Um, another thing that we can definitely do is like start helping our neighbors. You know, like what happened to us? Where where did it go wrong? When did we become a society that just stopped talking to our neighbors, or you know, you you stopped asking your neighbors if they needed help, or set a friendly hello, and again, maybe this isn't you, or maybe it is, and you need to hear this. Maybe you need to start talking to your neighbor. You don't really know what your neighbor's going through. You don't really know what kind of impact you can make in your community by just kind of start, just by beginning to communicate with your neighbors and asking them if they need any help with anything, you know, I have neighbors that live maybe a couple couple units down and they're super sweet. They're they're like an older Asian couple and they're super super sweet because they you know they'll come by every once in a while and they'll drop off some cereal whole wheat by the way, whole wheat cereal. <laughs> And that's what I'm saying. Like, those are the kind of things right there because you think about them and you just know that that you can count on people like that, that they're just always thinking of you or someone's thinking of you. And it's just a very good feeling to have that in your community to know that they're doing these selfless acts. Like, they don't want anything in return. They just want to give. And imagine how you would feel inside if you did the same thing for, like, your neighbor just you'd be surprised how much you can impact and change someone just by saying a simple good morning maybe you've never talked to them maybe 
you, you're assuming all these things in your head, but you just don't know until you actually do something about it. Um, another thing that you could do to help your community that can be very helpful is start donating things. Like maybe you have too much shit. Your house is cluttered. You're just, you can't think straight. You're just like, holy shit, I am becoming an episode of The Hoarders. Or is it Hoarders? Uh, anyways, so... Yeah, start donating some things to your local Goodwills, local thrift stores, um, homeless shelters, where, wherever like you feel it in your heart that would be more beneficial. Um, there's plenty of places that you can look online for people that are really in need of certain things. And again, it, it just donating things is such a good feeling when you're, especially when you're getting rid of something that you just know you really don't utilize anymore but you know in your heart that it can make someone else's life maybe a little bit easier, a little bit more comfortable. It's a really good feeling. And I embrace you to like be part of that feeling. Even donating money. Um, donating money to organizations for good causes, like for animal shelters, for, for, for the homeless so they can buy themselves like things that they need to survive. Like when they're out in the streets, like you really don't know until you actually start beginning to try to implement these kind of things in your life. And I, I always ask myself, I'm just like, when did, when did we become so isolated as a society? Like, when did that happen? Honestly, I don't know. I, I don't have the answer to that. But I know that I don't really want to be part of that. And I really hope that you don't want to be part of that either. Like, because if you're listening to me, most likely you probably want something different in your life. You're just looking for, you just want to be happy. You want to be carefree. Because that's kind of what my life feels like. I just want to be happy. I really don't want to worry about things that I can't control. But I just know that if I can help, I would like to help my community because when you step out of your home and you see your community is just like, the energy is so amazing. People, you can just talk to anybody in your neighborhood. Like, it's so good. You know how horrible it is to be have to walk out and maybe you don't trust your neighbors. Maybe you never said hello to anyone. So it's just this tension and why would anybody want that in their life? Why would anyone want to teach that to their children or the generations to come? Like, well, this is the way it is. This is the way we're going to live. I wouldn't personally want to teach that to the upcoming generation. And sometimes maybe, you know, maybe you notice things in your neighborhood. Maybe you notice that your neighbor a couple houses down maybe needs a little paint job or little help with repairing their gutters or, um, you know, maybe you notice that they need help with their lawn or their gardening. Go up. You're not doing anything. You got a little spare time. Go up, knock on the door, introduce yourself. Say, hey, what's up? You know, you notice you need a little pain. You know, you think I need a little help, you know, offer some help. You, you would be so surprised the kind of reaction you would get. You would be so surprised the kind of friendship that you could have just bloomed in that moment. But we will never know until we start opening ourselves up to the idea of building a community and actually realizing the type of power and potential we have as people, that we're much stronger together than we are divided. Um, another thing that I thought would be really fun to help our community is to kind of just start volunteering. You're like volunteering, like walking around the neighborhood, you know, maybe put up a sign saying that on this day, I'm going to volunteer and clean up trash around my neighborhood. Let people know, start kind of putting it up and, you know, hey, you want to be involved? You get other little kids involved. It's, you know, again, we are born in this world, man. This world belongs to us from the minute we are born. It is us. Like when we're young, we have this mentality where, where the possibilities are endless. So 
where do we where do we stop thinking that? Where do we think that that ends? Because it doesn't. It it doesn't end. It just continues. But somehow along the way, we just for some reason think like um, that it's not as significant anymore, and it is. It really is. Another thing that, uh, you know, well, one of the things that I really, really actually love about L.A. is that L.A., um, in certain areas of L.A., but not just in certain, a lot of areas of L.A., you know, these artists out here are creating murals and depicting like kind of like the values of the community and kind of showing the arts and and the music and kind of showing people like, hey, like this is what my neighborhood's about. And I I don't think as people, we should never be afraid to express our art in our community. We should start introducing it, if anything, more into the cities that we live in. And you never know, like by just doing that, like introducing your art to your city or just expand it, or maybe you decide to paint something somewhere at your local park or in, you know, the little downtown area. This, yeah, this is me calling out the the painters and the artists out there and the graffiti artists like, hey, we need you, man. We need you, man. Get out here. It's just such a beautiful feeling, like, when you go into your neighborhood and you see art, like, just art. Art is good. Um, art is a really good thing because it makes people, like, see colors. It makes them see texture, patterns. And that's a really good thing because it opens up our minds and... That's a really good thing to be exposed to in your community, if you ask me. Another thing that uh, that um, we could do to definitely like help our community, I don't know. I would I would definitely say like just maybe you can plant a community garden, and you know, I understand that like some cities have you know maybe like city per like their city permits like maybe you can't plant something on the sidewalk and be like well or it just depends like what city you live in like some cities are more strict than others but what's stopping anybody from like planting a community garden at your local park where a lot of children and families go like you can make a difference especially if you kind of get other people involved and start talking to people and, and kind of putting yourself out there. And I know it's a scary thing, but you'd be surprised once you do how much it changes things. And just imagine for a second here, you started planning a community garden and everyone's like, you know what, I, I want to be part of this. And other people started coming along and, you know, maybe planning, planning their tomato plants or, um, you know, different things, it would be so, so amazing. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people, once they started seeing this garden flourish, like a lot of people would probably want to be involved in it. And like, why wouldn't anybody want to do that? Like, I would love to see that in my community. And I think I think I myself might start a community garden. Like, I have a garden in my window at home, but not in my, not anywhere outside of, like, my house. But I wouldn't mind doing something like that and just kind of start inviting people to be, like, part of it if they wanted to also bring plants and stuff, you know? Um, another thing that we can do to help our community... And this is something that I noticed too, like at one of my local parks is that um, I noticed that it's like the playground is kind of a bit older and, you know, I don't know why, but, you know, a lot of parks and 
cities, like uh, especially out of the like the city where I live. Um, whenever I tend to go out of the city, I notice that like the parks just get better and they're getting more modern, I guess you could say is a word for it. And they're amazing. But one of the things that you can help do for your community is definitely like start organizing a campaign to start raising money for like new playground equipment or reconstruct the playground. Um, you know, start getting people to uh, see the vision, you know, start donating, maybe print out some flyers. So many possibilities, you guys, so many possibilities. Um, you can even share your skills in your community. You could, you're like, how do I share my skills? What do you, what do you mean by that? I'm like, like this, like we all have talents. We all have talents. Some of us are really good at yoga some of us are really good at knitting. Uh, there's just so many things. But again, if you were to volunteer and teach a class at a community center for free, like you're volunteering, just maybe have a little bit of time, it could be so helpful for your community. Like imagine someone like, oh, man, I just want to do something new or you know, they're looking for free re resources and there you are offering um, a free class to teach them something, like share a skill that they didn't even know. And to, you're just, you're changing something because you're making more connections with people. And it's, I, I don't think I have to say this, it's such a good feeling and it's very rewarding. And at the end of it all, you'll thank yourself. Dang it, Vanessa, like, such a good idea, man. Such a good idea. Um, um, another thing that um, I've noticed, too, in, like, some neighborhoods, for some reason, the lighting on the streets is, like, just so poorly lit. And it's a lot of reason. It's there. Those are reasons why cars are getting broken into and... Um, People get mugged, you know, people are assaulted and ways that we can like change that as a community is kind of start campaigning for additional lighting on streets that are poorly lit because let's face it, you know, like not, not all cities have the help that other cities do and it needs people like us to speak up and kind of get it going. And, um, yeah, so today I definitely kind of just wanted to talk on, on ways that we can help our community. And I really hope that with some of the things I've shared here today, um, you really think about it. And again, if there's anything that you want me to discuss and anything that you want me to bring up, I will be more than glad to talk about it because, I mean, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> um, but definitely, uh, yeah, I really hope some of the things that I've shared are helpful and they made you think of ways to help your community we're in a crisis right now and we need to do something about it because our world will not survive at the rate that it's going um all this all this um talk about the amazon rainforest fires i'm pretty sure man that there's no way in hell that this stuff is just like happening like on its own with uh lightning strikes <laughs> i'm more than positive that there is that this is definitely something that has been human induced because they are trying to make more land so that there can be more 
um, you know, cattle, cattle ranching produced so that more meat production is produced just to keep up with the demand. Demand and supply. But at the same time, the more cows and the more cattle we get out there, they're going to emit methane, and that is so bad for our air. And honestly, like, they're emitting a serious amount of greenhouse gases. And this stuff is probably, it's like the biggest culprit of climate change. And like, how do we not care about that? Like, We've been hearing people talk about it for some time. You hear celebrities talk about it. You probably heard your grandma talk about it. And now we have a young, a young, intelligent young girl named Greta Thunberg talking about it, complaining about it against five countries over the climate crisis. For fuck's sake, man, this little girl went up there and is like bawling her eyes out and is prepared to battle people that are three times her age. And it's crazy. And it's just like what what she said to me, like, not to me, but I don't know why I said it, (laughs) but it felt like she said it to me when I was like hearing it. When she said, you've stolen my dreams, and I, I'm quoting what she said. She said, you've, you have stolen my dreams in my childhood with your empty words, and yet I'm, the one, I'm one of the lucky ones. She said, people are suffering and people are dying. Seriously, guys, like, just today's podcast was a little more serious than I would have liked. (laughs) But I just really wanted to say a little bit on how I felt about the community and ways that I think we can help. And we should, because like I said, when we were born, this world belongs to all of us. It just doesn't belong to a particular person. And we really need to come together and do something about this. Because we, our world is in trouble right now. And it isn't going to get solved with just one person. Like, I can't do this all alone. Um, so I just, yeah, really wanted to come on here and talk about the community and ways of how we can improve it. And definitely wanted to bring up other little points and how it all kind of coincides together. For next week, I definitely am going to select three um, listeners. I'm going to take their questions for a QA and a and I'm going to answer them on the podcast. So I'll definitely let you guys know um, a little bit after today. Um, I'll post something about it on my IG, kind of let you guys know, like, all right, ask your questions and I will go ahead and answer them during my podcast as a Q&A. So that would be really fun. And I really want to thank all my listeners and the people who have been sending me suggestions for the podcast. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. And thank you for listening in and for being a part of this movement. So, yeah. Um, I will leave you guys... On the snow, it was a real slice, (laughs) a real slice. And thank you guys for being so beautiful. And it's Wednesday, guys, so hell yeah, weekends and two more days. So let's stay positive and upbeat. And remember, man, help your neighbors out. Don't be an asshole, says Vanessa Herrera, over and out. As always, have a kick-ass Wednesday. Bye-bye.